welcome to Adelaide and another episode of Pooches at Play. This week we're in my old hometown and I can't wait to show you some highlights. That's right, not only are we in Lara's old stomping ground, we're also going to meet some special pooches and their proud owners that call this part of the world home. Plus we've got our usual great training and some travel tips too. That's right, so grab a cuppa, get comfy, grab your furry friend and enjoy the show. Alrighty Dar, shall we show Morgan our favourite park? So you, that'd be awesome. I'd love to see your photos. Is that where you spent your time as a child? Mm, a bit. <laughs> Adelaide is known as the city of churches, but there is so much more to the city than that. And one of the best things is the seaside. So I'm going to take you and Darcy along for a stroll at one of my favourite walks, starting right here at Henley Beach. But first I need some coffee. Don't worry Darcy, I've heard there's a good dog friendly cafe and uh, there's plenty of stuff there for you too. You want a cappuccino or a cookie maybe? Henley Beach is a pretty little seaside suburb, about 20 minutes drive from the centre of the city. It's the kind of place you visit for a relaxing stroll, a swim in the summertime and for the great food. Even on a windy day like today, it's still a nice spot for a walk. This place is so popular with dog owners, they set up an Instagram account called Dogs of Malobo. And I'm going to meet a local Insta pooch, Winnie the Grudel. And her owners too. Come on, Das. The best thing about Malobo is there's loads of space outside to sit in the sunshine with your pooch. Plus, plenty of tasty stuff on the menu. Apparently, the dog cookies are amazing and I've also heard they serve some of the best coffee on offer in Adelaide. Mind you, any caffeine would make me happy this late in the morning. Rachel, what do you love about being down at Henley? Oh, Henley's just such a fantastic place for many reasons. We bring the dog Winnie down here. She loves running around on the beach, playing with the other dogs. There's some fantastic cafes here like Malibu um, and also some other great dog friendly cafes where they're open to having like your dogs. Um, it's just a great vibe here at, at Henley. Yeah, we love it. And there's the walk that we're doing that we're, we're going to start on. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, so the Case Path Walk is about 70 k's. Wow. Um, and <laughs> it runs from Selix to North Haven. Um, we often take the dogs on um, part of the walk and stop here. Um, and then we have a coffee and um, these <laughs> yummy ah, cookies. Now is that for you <laughs> or for Winnie? Well, I think they look good enough for, for, for me to eat, oh, but no. um, they're actually dog cookies. Oh, wow. They're homemade, they're pretty good aren't they? Yeah they look really really healthy, they're full of seeds and carrot and zucchini. I bet and... you've tried them. <laughs> <laughs> now Sienna tell me what is it that you love about doing Winnie's Instagram account? I believe you're the one behind it all. Um, yes, yeah. well I love how I can express all the cute things that Winnie does with all of her followers and I love how I can express how Winnie goes through life with all of her followers. Oh that's nice, well I reckon we should finish our coffees and, and the bickies. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, yours! <laughs> and uh, we'll go do part of the walk together, shall we? Sounds awesome. Nice. Do you want some biscuit? Walking around the Esplanade and Beach is one of my favourite things to do when back in town. Regardless of the time of year and weather, it's always lovely to start the day. Darcy loves the freedom to run around and play in the water, but today, even with his favourite ball, I couldn't entice him in for a swim. It seems I wasn't the only one feeling the cold. From Henley to Semaphore, it's about 10 k's, but there are places to stop and rest along the way. Or you can just do the out and back to Grange Jetty, which is a scenic 4k return journey. The beaches along this end of the coastal path walk are leash free for most parts of the year. During daylight savings though, they have to be on leave between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. and all other times they must still be under effective control. And don't forget to pick up your doggy do every time. Even Darcy's little ones have to go. Come on, Darcy. Good boy, yeah. Semaphore is one of the most frequented beaches in Adelaide. During the warmer months, it's a hive of activity popular with families who take advantage of the extensive green foreshore area that features rides, mini golf, a bike track and kiosks. For the keen anglers among you, it's a popular spot to wet a line too. On a day like this, you really would have to be keen though. Well, this is the final stop for Darcy and I, the beautiful Semaphore. We've been going for about two hours now. We've only got about an hour left of the North Haven end, but I don't know, I reckon this little guy needs a break. Actually, he could go for hours. I'm the one that needs the break. Let's go get coffee again, Dust. 
Early socialisation and training is one of the most important foundations you can provide for your dog. It's critical in helping keep many dog behaviour problems at bay. The National Dog Trainers Federation understands that this isn't always easy when life gets busy, so it has developed its find a trainer resource to help. So if your dog barks, digs or displays other unwanted behaviour, don't wait hoping they'll grow out of it. Dogs grow into problem behaviours. To find a trainer that has completed the NDTF Certificate 3 in Dog Behaviour and Training and has the expertise to help, visit ndtf.net.au. <laughs>when it comes to feeding horses for optimized health and nutrition adelaide based trainer john heim knows exactly how to keep them at the top of their game he's also just as dedicated to his dogs hey john tina do you mind if i come in hello hey boris boris, come on, come boris. On. how many horses have you got uh 30 i say 36 37 oh work a few then yeah so yeah. that's what only worked 16 and 16 to 18 at a time so you're a horse trainer, how long have you been at it for? Uh, I've been training myself for nearly 10 years now, so more feel here, so. Right. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great great thing to do. I enjoy getting up every morning early and getting yep. out with the horses and the animals. It's, it's great fun. Yeah, how many horses do you have? Uh, I've probably got about 37 on the books altogether. Um, yeah, but we only train probably probably 16, 18 at a time here. We try and keep a small yep. number in work so we can concentrate on a lot more. Yeah, right. And what's this one's name who's trying to eat me? Uh, he's not named yet, but his nickname's Danny. So Danny. Yeah, he's only been with us for probably about six months. He's only a baby. Danny the Chompers. Yeah, he's learning the caper, but no, he's yeah. a nice little horse. He's good. He's fun. <laughs> and how important is diet and nutrition for their health? And gut nutrition's the main thing with a horse. You've got to have yep. the feed breaking down properly and that sort of thing. And um, we really concentrate on the, on the feed and the different protein levels and energy levels and that sort of stuff in the horses, which is the main thing. Yeah, and you use the same kind of ideas for the dogs as well? Yeah definitely, Look, so we use a lot of probiotics with the horses and we've been starting to use a lot of that with the dogs as well now. So, And have you noticed much improvement since you changed their diet? Yeah big improvement with the, with the dogs, especially uh, Willie the Golden Retriever. Yeah. He, uh, his old diet, he was very very loose in his stools and, and that upset stomach all the time, very sensitive so we changed him over the big dog foods, the raw food and he was definitely a lot better um, but then we changed him to the probiotics as well and now he's 100%, he's really right. good and very happy dogs. So. Yeah he seems happy. Yeah. And they don't mind the horses at all obviously? But they love the horses, yeah. yeah. A couple of the older ones, and he'll lay down to sleep in the, in the box with them. And that's oh, really? Stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, they, awesome. They, they get on really well with each yeah. other. So. And what got you into horses? Was it just family thing? or? Yeah, well, look, it was. Oh, my father was a jockey. Obviously, I didn't get that size. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I got away from that for a while, and yeah. I'm a greenskeeper by trade. Um, and then I met my wife, Tina, and her dad was a trainer, so I got back into the racing from there. Yeah. And you love it? Yeah, I do, yeah. I love it. Meet a lot of nice people and, and have a lot of success, and it's good, you know, it's a good industry to be in. It's yeah. Like, a lot of, lot of fun and <laughs> you're gonna get eaten there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun and I really enjoy it. It's good. It's hard work and there's a lot of tough times, but the rewards outweigh everything else, so it's good. Yeah, that's awesome. And you get to be around all these animals, the dogs and the horses and yeah, yeah. I can not have fun doing that. No, we couldn't, there's not many other better jobs around where you can work with animals the whole time every day. So yeah, exactly. No, it's very rewarding. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, if you want to know more about Big Dog, go on their website and check it out. Don't eat me anymore. Taking your dog away on holidays always requires preparation, but when it comes to having a puppy alongside you, there's a few more extra considerations. Most puppies come microchipped, but if you're not 100% sure, ask a vet to check. Absolutely make sure they're wearing their collar and ID tag with your mobile phone number on it. All dogs should have one, but young dogs still in training in a new environment or even getting used to their new family can very easily get them lost. It goes without saying that we would have considered our primary vaccination course, that C5 vaccinations, so we're fully covered there. Also think about exposure to new bugs and new parasites, so fleas, worm. We need to think about also tick paralysis as well, so the flea treatment that you use, make sure that it covers ticks as well, particularly common down the eastern seaboard of Australia. Once again, preparation is key. As puppies are still learning and getting used to the big wide world around them, changes to their environment and routine can be both exciting and stressful for you and your pup. All dogs, particularly puppies, thrive on consistency. So let's make sure that we deliver exactly the same messages, particularly when it comes to training while we're traveling, the same as we do at home. Think about toilet training. Once again, those messages need to be consistent in order for us to modify behavior.
With a jam-packed holiday schedule in place, it may be difficult, but just the same, you still need to walk them, allow toileting time, feed them at a consistent time, the same time you would when at home. This goes a long way to smooth out any anxieties. So too does taking along their bed and blanket, a range of toys, their lead and harness for the car ride, and definitely take along their crate to help keep them safe. If you haven't done it already, think now about crate training your puppy. It's a great way to take a mobile, safe place around with you while traveling and while at home. One of the most important resources for your puppy is food. And let's always keep that consistent while we're traveling as well. So let's think about a high quality, digestible and palatable food and keep that the same throughout your travels. When it comes to treats, keep these consistent too, in terms of brand, ingredients, and what you use them for. The Milky Sticks, for example, can break up easily, so these are great to help with your training and relationship building, whilst longer lasting treats like the chicken tenders can keep them occupied on the journey. The most important resource for your puppy is, of course, you. We're on holidays together to form a lasting relationship, to form a strong bond. Let's make sure that we're having heaps of fun with one another, have some relaxing times with one another, and always take heaps of photos, because he won't be a puppy for long. If you'd like to see more of the antics from Pooches at Play, then follow us online via Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. There's also a great website with loads of tips, training, and travel ideas to help keep you and your pooch happy and healthy. You can even sign up to our e-newsletter to get special member-only offers. Just head to poochesatplay.com. <laughs>Well done, well done. You're a champion. The microchipping of dogs and cats is compulsory across most of Australia, yet too many of them end up lost and in shelters due to contact details not being up to date. Or with cats in particular, the large majority aren't even being microchipped at all. Christine, why is microchipping so important? It's really important because it's the only way that you can connect a dog or, or in any kind of animal actually to a particular person and their owner. So if they get lost, it's their way home basically. Very important. How does it work? So what happens is, uh, first of all, we check each dog for a, um, a microchip, make mm -hmm. sure they don't have one before we actually do it. And then we just really simply use this as an implanter, microchips inside that, yes. pinch the back of the skin, straight Ooh. in, implant, and it's done. Wow, that was so easy. re-scan, re and there it goes, picks it up. Oh. So what happens now is, if Oscar was to go and get lost, mm. um, picked up by council, They'll grab a scanner, scan them, chip number comes up, that's connect, connected to a registry where the owner's name is. We call them and he goes home. Perfect, never getting lost, Oscar. But you know, it is mandatory in most states and territories, so why are there so many pets ending up in shelters despite this? Uh, in most cases, um, the microchip details are not up to date. Mm -hmm. um, people just forget to change them when they move, change their phone, lose their phone, um, you know, get a new job and maybe they've used their, their phone number from their job. So up to date details and also lots of pets still not are not microchipped. Right. Um, uh, cats, for example, 80 to 90 percent of cats are still not microchipped. Can you believe that? Wow. And yeah. it is mandatory in most states and territories. It is. Um, but uh, cats, unlike dogs, they're, they're not registered in most places. Mm. So people People think it's not necessary but it really is and at ten dollars I mean there is no excuse not to no there's not and if people aren't sure or they're not sure if their details up to date how can they check their pet the best way to do it is to take them to a vet get mm -hmm. the vet to scan them and give them the chip number yes and they can tell them what registry it is and check their details but make sure it up is up to date if of you course. change your phone change your address uh, secondary contact always have a secondary contact yes. mum brother whatever um, just so that there's every possibility of making sure the animal gets home. Of course you want to find them home. And tell me a little bit about the chiplets. Well, we started in 2015. We saw a need because most animals we were finding weren't chipped um, and people were complaining that it was too expensive. So at $10, as I said, no excuse. <laughs> no. Um, so we've done almost 40,000 now just here in South Australia. Wow. And nationally, we started in 2016 with pet stock and that's just gone absolute gangbusters and doing really well. Once again, $10 all around Australia, no excuse. No. So Christine, should someone lose their dog on holiday or even at home, what are some of your tips? 
First of all, let the local council know. Secondly, local vets, all the local vets, and make the most of the Facebook pages like Lost Pets of SA. Yes. There's one in almost every place in Australia. Mm -hmm. Huge reach, lots of people wanting to get animals home. Um, best way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And tell us, where can we find out about the next great microchip blitz and when it's happening? Well, it's October this year at pet stock stores all around Australia. Mm -hmm. Best way to find out is petstock.com.au on their website, all the details. Awesome. So make sure you check it out. There's no excuses. Oscar, it means you can never get lost either. But if you do happen to lose your dog, don't forget to check out the Pooches at Play website. So we've got some tips on there as well. Thanks, Christine. Thank you. That wasn't so bad at all, was it? One of the must-visit places in Adelaide Hills is Handorf. You could be mistaken for thinking it's a quaint German town, when in fact it's only 30 minutes southwest from Adelaide CBD. Now, it gets its name from the fact that it was settled way back in 1839 by Prussian Lutherans, and this architecture harks back to that time, giving it a real charm. Now, not only is it famous for its colonial buildings, but also for the fact that it has fantastic food, and I'm guessing probably some good German beers, which I might go find. Handorf was actually voted South Australia's most pet-friendly region. There are loads of places here that welcome you and your pooch with open arms. From cafes, restaurants and wineries to most of the retail outlets, canine companions are invited to join in on the fun, which makes spending your time here really enjoyable. There are plenty of restaurants where you can go and take your dog to eat, but the Seasonal Garden Cafe is more than just an eatery. It's an ever-changing landscape that evolves with the seasons, hence the name. The cool thing is, while you're waiting for your food to be made, you can come out here, walk around, enjoy the scenery, and bring your pooch with you. Come on, Jojo. Come on, Jojo. Good boy. You're going to need somewhere to stay while you're exploring the area, and this is the pick of the bunch. It's the aptly named Dog and Me Cottage. It's fur kid and family friendly, there's heaps of room for the humans and the canines, but best of all, there's loads to do right outside the door, so you don't need to keep everyone entertained by chucking them in the car. You can just walk, can't you, Jojo? You're keen to get inside. Come on, buddy. Jojo and I have definitely found the best spot in the house, right in front of the fire. Oh, a little head scratch, you like that? A glass of wine wouldn't be bad, would it? We are in Adelaide Hills. The Australian Lions Hearing Dogs trains dogs for the hard of hearing to help provide independence, confidence and security. They're also helping to save lives by mostly using shelter dogs. So let's go find out how they're trained. So Nick, what kind of skills does a hearing dog need to learn? So as they've got the same public access rights as guide dogs for the blind, mm -hmm. uh, they need to go through an intense socialisation program here, uh, which just starts with um, just your small dog walks and then builds up to um, going into shopping centres and uh, the bigger main streets. Yes. So at the same time we'll be training the dogs to respond and alert their recipients to up to 10 household sounds. Mm -hmm. Um, so that includes your alarm clock, your door knock, doorbell, your, your phones, um, your baby cry. We mm -hmm. do a baby cry as well. That's um, an important one. And uh, probably the most important one would be the smoke alarm. Of um, but that's a bit different. Um, so what the dog will do will be to, to touch the recipient and then drop in a warning signal. Okay. Because uh, we don't want the dog running into the fire. No, definitely, danger, so. definitely yeah. not. What about the telephone? So the telephone, like the majority of the sounds, uh, is worked in three legs. Mm -hmm. So the first leg would be the dog finding the source of the sound, so mm -hmm. running to the source. Yes. and then coming back and physically touching the recipient and then the, the last leg would be taking the recipient back to the sound uh, yeah so if it was a, if it was a telephone they'd take them back to the phone so they yep. can take the of call of course yeah. and they know that's happening there and you use positive reward training here yeah and we, we use food on all of our in all of our training here they all so, work yeah. well too. they've got to be food motivated yeah, that, then that's <laughs> the, one of the major parts of finding the right dog is they've got to be food motivated they've got to love the food yeah so what skills as a trainer do you need to have this job well, the majority of the trainers here have done the certificate in mm -hmm. dog behaviour and training through the National Dog Trainers Federation. Great course. <laughs> um, and that's, that's been excellent because it all puts, puts us all on the same page. Yeah. Um, we know what motivates the dogs um, mm -hmm. and gives us, gives us um, the information to tackle any behavioural problems as yes. well we may see. Um, a lot of the time, we'll, we'll, most of the time we'll use um, rescue dogs okay. where we can. Yes. Um, 
And oh, yeah, wow. that, that, that that's comes. really important <laughs> to understand behaviour then, doesn't it, and assess them. So where do you get the shelter dogs from? Uh, we go down to the RSPCA and the Animal Welfare League here locally, as well as um, other rescue organisations like the York Peninsula Puppy Rescue. Nice. Um, and we yeah, just try and find a suitable dog that'll, mm -hmm. that'll do well in the program. Okay, and what kind of traits do you look for? Uh, the, the scruffy little terriers are great. Ah, <laughs> oh, Darcy would be Yeah, you yep, Darcy would be great. Um, yeah, just it, de it depends on the um, depends on the application as to what size dog we'd, we'd okay. go for. But generally, a, a smaller, smaller, uh, yeah, like I said, a scruffy. A little, <laughs> I love the scruffies. Yeah, yeah. And you provide them free to the recipients, don't you? We do. Um, so that's all thanks to the Lions Clubs of Australia. Mm -hmm. um, all the dogs, they're valued at $35,000 at the end right. of their training. Yeah, it's not cheap. Um, and they go out as a gift thanks to Lions Clubs of Australia. Oh, wonderful. Well, if you'd like to find out more about the work of the Lions Hearing Dogs and how you can help, visit their website. And if you'd like to find out more and study the Certificate 3 in Dog Behaviour and Training, like Nick and I have, visit their website. Thank you, Nick. Thank now, you very much. Uh, has anyone told you to like Jon Snow from Game of Thrones? <laughs> I get it every now and then. Do you? I haven't seen it, but apparently you do. Everyone oh, here. I haven't seen it. seen it either, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to win a Pawson Travel Pack valued at over two thousand dollars for you and your furry friend? One lucky viewer will win this great prize, including a two hundred and fifty dollar pet stock gift card and travel essentials bundle, a three hundred dollar Easy Dog Travel Pack, an Adaptal or Feel Away Calm Pack, a year's supply of Vita Pet Treats and $500 worth of Big Dog Freeze, Dried Bites and Snuffle Mat. Simply tell us one of the locations you've seen us visit during Series 4 and why you love travelling with your pet. It's that easy. Visit the Pooches at Play website to enter. Before heading away on holidays with your pooch, make sure you're well prepared by visiting the Pooches at Play website to download my free pet-friendly travel guide. It contains plenty of tips to help you find the right accommodation, know what to pack, plus health, safety and training advice, plus much more. Simply enter your name and your email address when prompted in the blue box at poochesatplay.com and after a few steps, it'll be delivered to your inbox. Well, that's it for another episode of Pooches at Play, but your canine fix doesn't have to stop there. Jump on over to the Pooches at Play website. It's packed full of great articles, videos, as well as old episodes. Mm -hmm. It is indeed, and don't forget to sign up to our newsletter so you can keep ahead of all the Pooches news. For now, though, I have a date with a glass of wine that you brought back from Adelaide Hills. Uh, about that, I might have finished that when I was working last night. Oh, that's all right. Can I have a German beer, though? Ah, das ist gut. Das ist gut. Ja, ich spreche Deutsch nicht so gut, though. You did. Did you do German at school? Oh uh, yeah. Do I know a little German? Ah. Oh. He's just over there. <laughs>